Hi, my name's Rich, and today I want to talk about the Alchemist subclass for the Artificer in 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons. So, let's get started. First off, we're going to cover some of the background of the Alchemist. In media, an Alchemist can be anything from a ninja with a utility belt full of smoke bombs to a mad scientist, and anything in between. Character-wise, you can go for a silent, stoic, mechanical, intelligent type, or you could go for a crazed, mad scientist. They're both uh, good tropes, but I'm sure you could devise something of your own accord. An alchemist is an expert at combining regents to produce mystical effects. Alchemists use their creations to give life and leech it away. Alchemy is the oldest of artificer traditions and its versatility has long been valued during times of war and peace. I'd like to tell you a little bit about the best races to pick for an Artificer Alchemist. Let me just check my notes. My first recommendation is High Elf because they get Intelligence Boost and they get a free cantrip, which is very useful to any spellcaster. My next pick is Fire Against Eye because they get good uh, upgrades and they get resistance to fire damage as well so that's a fantastic bonus especially if you're going to be in the front line and with artificers with alchemists specifically you're playing the role of the cleric in the sense that you're going to be a front line you're going to be able to take damage and deal it out and you're backing up most of the crew you're giving healing potions and buffing everyone else up while you're at it the next race is Rock Gnome. This should be an obvious one because it goes hand in hand with the alchemist trope. The mad scientist working away on new inventions and trying to create new potions. Statistically, a hobgoblin is a great choice for an artificer because they can get up close and personal in combat and they have a boost to constitution and intelligence, which works perfectly. And the last thing I'd like to point out is Warforged. Uh, they can naturally get a constitution bonus and you can add to anything else so you can add it to the intelligence and being able to stay up all night with sentries rest can be fantastic if you're trying to make potions throughout the night next i'd like to go through some of the feats that are viable for the alchemist first we have elemental adept which is great for boosting the damage of your cantrips healer could be a good option depending on how you want to play the class. Being able to heal outside of combat is very helpful. And finally, I would recommend you pick up the Warcaster feat. It complements being able to attack and cast at the same time. Two things I'd like to point out about the Alchemist. You should ask your DM if guns are setting relevant, because if you can get your hands on a pistol, it's a fantastic weapon for the Alchemist. And also, you should check out the Alchemist Supply Rules from Xanathar's Guide to Everything. I'll put them uh, on one side of the screen. If you're fast, you can pause it and go through the rules at your own speed. But being able to produce basic items is, fun is a great way to help you at lower levels. And then look up the rules for making magic items if you want to try and create potions. It would take a lot of time and money, but it's part of the character, so I'm sure you'll be enthusiastic. And as a final note, I would recommend you take a quick dive into Pathfinder. The Pathfinder rules are very interesting and they have a very big depth of rules and mechanics you can use as inspiration to try and homebrew some of your own creations. The ability to create potions has unlimited possibilities. Next, I'd like to cover some of the spells that you get exclusively to Alchemist. At third level, you get Healing Word and Ray of Sickness. Healing Word is an essential spell and is the cornerstone of the Alchemist. Ray of Sickness is okay, but it's not a fantastic spell. In my opinion, it's not the first pick. At fifth level, you gain Flaming Spear and Melf's Acid Arrow. One's a fantastic single target damage and the other one does damage over time. They're both good options to help you out dealing damage in combat. At level 9, you get Gaseous Form and Mass Healing Word. This just further reinforces the Alchemist's role as a healer in the party, and Gaseous Form is 
a great way to get out of emergencies in a pinch. And it can be used for multiple different scenarios. It's not just a specific way to use it. I'm sure if you use your imagination or even just leave a comment and you can d tell us how to use a gaseous form to its best. At level 13, you get Blight and you get Death Ward. Blight is a great way to deal damage, but Death Ward is a fantastic way to stop your allies from dying. It's a really powerful spell and it can help boost and reinforce your healer archetype with the Alchemist. But don't forget, the Alchemist is good in combat as well, so you have the best of both worlds. It really is a two-sided character. At level 17, you get Cloud Kill and Ray is dead. Cloud Kill is a fantastic way to deal damage over an area of effect, but Ray is dead. I, I don't need to explain how powerful this spell can be. You can just look at the definition there. Next, we're going to look at the abilities. At level 3, you gain access to Experimental Elixir. Whenever you finish a long rest, you can magically produce an Experimental Elixir and an empty flask you touch. Roll on the Experimental Elixir table for the Elixir's effect, which is triggered when someone drinks the Elixir. As an action, a creature can drink the Elixir or administer it to an incapacitated creature. You can create additional Experimental Elixirs by expending a spell slot of first level or higher for each one. When you do so, you use your action to create the elixir in an empty flask you touch, and you can choose the elixir's effect from the experimental elixir table. Creating an experimental elixir requires you to have alchemist supplies on your person, and any elixir you create with this feature lasts until it is drunk, or until the end of the next long rest. When you reach a certain level in the class, you can make more elixirs at the end of a long rest, two at sixth level, and three at fifteenth level, Roll for each elixir's effect separately. Each elixir requires its own flask. The fact that you can spend a spell slot to create another elixir and choose what type of elixir you want to make is very powerful. Let's look through the different types of elixirs you can make. Now in my notes, I'd say the healing is a fantastic choice you know exactly what it does on the tin. And the fact you can create them and give them out to your teammates is always helpful. No one's going to say no to a free healing potion. And it's worth noting, swiftness is okay in situations, but it's not, a f not the best option. If you get it on a random roll, then you've got it for an hour, so you might as well try and do something creative with it. The third option is resilience gaining a plus one to AC for 10 minutes. Downing one of these before combat is a great way for a battle master or another tanky creature to get in front of everyone else and take the brunt of the damage. The fourth option is boldness. You can add a d4 to the number roll to every attack roll and saving throw they make for the next minute. Now the fact you can do this for over the course of a minute and it's reoccurring as well as like a really powerful bless spell. The fifth option is flight. You gain a flying speed of 10 feet for 10 minutes. This can circumnavigate so many traps and uh, barriers your party's going to face. You shouldn't underestimate how powerful flight is. And the fact you can get it at third level just shows you how powerful this class can be. The final option is Transformation. You get a free Alter Self spell. And it lasts for 10 minutes, so... So I'm sure that you can use it to adapt to whatever situation you're facing on the fly. Also at level 3, you gain access to proficiency with Alchemist tools. You should refer back to the previous part of the video, where I show how you can use the Alchemist tools to create basic items and potentially make magic potions. At level 5, you gain the ability Alchemical Savant. You've developed masterful command of magical chemicals, enhancing the healing and damage you create through them. 
Whenever you cast a spell using your alchemist supplies as a spellcasting focus, you gain a bonus to one roll of the spell. That roll must restore hit points, or be a damage roll that deals acid, fire, necrotic or poison damage, and the bonus equals your intelligence modifier, minimum of plus one. So if we look at the spells the alchemist has available to them, the obvious cantrips are firebolt and acid splash, they go, they're both going to benefit from getting the plus to damage. And Poison Spray is also a good option. But uh, on the first level, the two that stand out the most to me are Cure Wounds and Tasha's Caustic Brew. Caustic Brew is a area of effect damage spell that goes in a straight line. So you can try and pick off as many people as possible with it. And it's great for dungeons with narrow corridors or if someone's been hit with a Booming Blade spell. At level 9, you gain the ability Restorative Regents. You can incorporate Restorative Regents into some of your works. Whenever a creature drinks an experimental elixir you created, the creature gains temporary hit points equal to 2d6 plus your intelligence modifier. Also, you can cast Lesser Restoration without expending a spell slot and without preparing the spell, Provided you use alchemist supplies as a spellcasting focus, you can do so a number of times equals to your intelligence modifier, and you can get it back after a long rest. Being able to cast lesser restoration on the fly is a great way to keep your party up and running, and, and if the DM has any encounters with status effects, everyone's going to be thankful that you can do these things and adding extra bonus hit points to everyone that drinks an elixir is not going to be turned down very quickly. It can be the difference between life and death in certain situations. Finally, at level 15, you gain the ability Chemical Mastery. You have been exposed to so many chemicals that they pose little risk to you, and you can use them to quickly end certain ailments. You gain resistance to acid damage and poison damage, and you're immune to the poison condition. You can cast Greater Restoration and Heal without expending a spell slot, without preparing the spell, and without material components, provided you use Alchemist Supplies as your spellcasting focus. Once you cast either spell with this feature, you can't cast the spell with it again until you finish a long rest. Getting a free Greater Restoration or Heal is fantastic, but as a capstone ability, at level 15, it's fantastic for supporting your group, but don't expect to be going into the front lines and dealing as much damage as possible. I think that if you're taking the Alchemist subclass, you understand that you're not going to be uh, dealing as much damage as the Armorer or the Battlesmith, but you still play an important role in the party. Now, some people say that the Alchemist isn't a very good class, but I would disagree. The fact that it has a specific role and it plays it very well shouldn't be underestimated. The game is not just about dealing as much damage as possible, it's about making sure your party is dealing with every situation and adapting and overcoming it. Now you're not going to be the face of the party, but you can definitely tank a hit or two and being able to give people magic items and help them get healed up is, should be very appreciated by most parties. And not to mention, I'm sure any rogues out there would love to get a free vial of poison off you for their sneak attack damage. Well, overall, I would give this a, a lower A. It's not one of the highest A ranks, but it's still a very good class to pick up. And if your party is needing a healer, then it fills a role perfectly. If you're enjoying the content at the moment, I'd love it if you gave me a thumbs up or left a comment. And if you don't like it, please tell me why and we can try and make the channel a better place. I'm available on Twitter. There is a Discord link down in the description if you want to chat in further length about subclasses. And I've got a Patreon open at the moment. If you're willing to help me out and throw me a couple of bucks for a cup of coffee, it would be very appreciated. Well, thanks for watching and I'll speak to you next time. Bye.